Hello and welcome to Progressions. Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to take a look at a preview of a new app called Progressions. Now these days most people uh, use either MIDI chord packs or apps to generate chord sequences and uh, these are usually based around the 24 major and minor scales. Uh, unfortunately the problem with that is that everything ends up sounding very much the same and it's not the way that conventional composers of old compose their masterpieces. Now as a contrast to that if we take a listen to many recent film scores or in fact uh, contemporary jazz artists they often break free from tonality and kind of drift away from that tonal centre. So instead of boring you with all the theory, let's take a practical look at how it works within progressions and how we manage to steer away from all these scales and modes that uh, a lot of people are not that familiar with. So the way progressions works is we um, evolve a set of chords based around a tonal center. And to do that, we set the key and the mode that we want to work with and uh, from there we can generate a set of chords based on that root key and mode. Now the complexity level tells progressions how complicated you want these chords. So on a basic level we only have them basic major and minor chords here, no six sevenths and so on. But as we progress up the uh, complexity levels, we start to introduce more complex sixth and seventh chords, as well as your ninths. Uh, when you get to uh, the higher levels, we get the uh, eleventh and thirteenth chords. And uh, you don't really need to know how and when to use them. When we generate a set of chords, the chord palette is filled with chords that you can use, and they're all based on that tonal root you set. Now if I switch wheel modes we can uh, we can show here how the freedom levels work. You can see the to tonal center is at the top of this wheel and as we progressively increase the freedom levels we increase uh, how far away from tonal center that uh, the algorithm can drift. So when we generate chord palettes uh, with uh, high freedom levels we can drift away further away from that tonal center. Now, up until now, you've seen me long pressing the generate button to uh, generate a full palette of chords. Uh, but if we just press the generate button, we'll bring up the uh, chord sequence generator. Now, this gives us some kind of manual control over chords and uh, we can step through a chord generation sequence and remove chords that we do not like. Now, one good thing to do here is to turn on the uh, the preview mode so that when we generate chords we can hear them sound. Now if I press the root button uh, you'll hear the root note sounding and every time I press next it adds an additional chord. Now if I close down the sequence generator window uh, and I just tap on one of these chord pads you'll hear the chord pad sound. But if you notice these chords are all in closed position. Now if I tap on the root chord at C major and I enable open chords and then hit reset chord you'll see that it's now become a open chord. 
and I can work my way through the palette, uh, uh, turning them all into uh, open chords just by hitting the uh, reset chord button. Of course, if the open chord button was enabled before I generated a palette, there would all be open chords. Now, we can also enable this additional bass note, which uh, again generates a synthesized bass note at runtime and uh, it really thickens out that sound. Now, we can optionally add any chord we want to a chord pad, um, but if you, uh, if you want, you can actually replace uh, any of these mathematically generated chords with an alternative which is based on the current complexity and freedom levels because we're on basic level we don't have a lot of chords to choose from but if we up the complexity that list gets huge now if we enable host sync and start the host transport we'll hit we'll play through our chord palette now we don't intend this to be an area where you construct songs or progressions but it's nice to be able to preview what you've got and uh, that will loop that set of chords uh, repeatedly. So now we've got a set of chords that we're happy with say um, I want to discuss play modes and how we can play back that set of chords using various modes such as arpeggiator and strummer. So if I start the playback of the host and uh, flick these modes, we can listen to them and see uh, how they work. Now that example uh, played through the chord palette uh, one chord after another and then repeated because auto was enabled. So I'm going to turn auto off here. First audition the chords that I used in the opening demo uh, just so you can hear how they sound. Okay, so if we go back to the initial chord uh, in the chord palette and then start the host going, uh, you'll notice that um, I'm able to select a chord and that chord will be queued until the next measure. Um, and uh, you can control the length of the measure using this measure knob down here. So the great thing about disabling auto is now we can switch between chord pads and switch between play modes and hear them seamlessly switch at the end of every measure. Now that gives us an idea of what chords we want to use out the toolbox and the order we want to play them in. And later we'll show you how to piece them together into a complete song. Now I just wanted to mention one thing while we're here. Uh, if we enable the MIDI input button, uh, we can uh, use the remote keyboard in standalone mode, say, for instance, or your, your own personal MIDI keyboard to uh, switch between um, chord pads or between modes uh, using MIDI notes 0 to 24. Uh, so that might be good for real-time performance, I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's definitely useful in trying out different chord progressions. Now one great feature you get from uh, progressions is the ability for all generated chords to have top, mo top note alignment and this is really important when you play an open chords and moving from one chord to another. As you can see on this little piano roll here as I switch between chords there is very little movement between uh, the top notes of those chords and that is very very important to keep the tonality uh, in check. Now. 
If we don't like a chord, we can always click on Edit Chord and we can come in here and manually edit a chord, adding additional notes if we wish. Notice a little chevron that appears in the top corner of an edited chord. Now if we remove any notes from a chord, you'll see that they're actually greyed out and that tells you that they, uh, that they should be there for that particular chord. Again, if you lose your way, just hit the reset chord button and we'll return back to the original unedited version of the chord. Now we discussed open and closed chords earlier on in this video. But if we're using open chords, to achieve top note alignment, we need to use something called chord voicings. And some of those voicings are better than others. Some create a more discordant sound, which might be something you're looking for, and others may not. Now if I swipe up on any chord pad, we'll see the variation that's currently in place for that pad. In this case, variation 1. If I turn a uh, switch to no variation, uh, you'll see the closed chord position. And I can pick uh, alternative variations and, uh, and see how they look. In this case, you can see that the, the notes of the chord are more spread. and will probably sound better in this situation, rather than having the notes closely together, which will create a bit of tension there. So the choice is yours. Now one thing I want to bring to your attention is if you are on a high complexity level and generating 11th or 13th chords, it can often sound a little jarring if all the notes of the chord are played. So in some cases like this 11th chord here, you'll notice one of the notes is greyed out. And if we look at the variation, you can see there's a little X there uh, indicating that that note is not played. Now obviously some variations uh, will have the notes spread and uh, and have all the notes of the chord in place but some don't and uh, it's up to you to pick the one that sounds right for you you can even edit that obviously and uh, remove notes or add notes at will now to avoid this video getting too long i'm going to break down uh, some of the individual sections i've not mentioned yet in separate videos but uh, one thing I want to mention before I go any further is song mode. Uh, this is how you construct songs. You don't really use the tool palette to play through a set of chords. It's it's okay for real time, and it's okay for previewing. But if you wanna if you wanna build a song, you need to use song mode. Now for this demo, I've got a an instance of progressions loaded into AUM with a number of instruments. And if we take a look at the outputs uh, of um, progressions, we can see that all these instruments are connected to uh, port 1. And uh, although we support four ports, I'm not going to touch on that today. Now to create a song, the first thing you need to do is enable the song button at the top of the interface. And to create your song chain, you just long press the song button and we have a little pop-up window which contains a list of chords um, and events uh, that are played back in the order you specify. Now hopefully there you noticed that the, um, the song went from block chord mode to sequencer mode and eventually it'll go to strumming mode. And you'll also have noticed the instruments that came in at various points. And we do that using something called styles. So if I clear this song and uh, it's simply a question of uh, selecting a chord in the chord palette and picking add in the uh, song sequencer window. And we can just progressively add uh, as many chords as we like in an order we like and uh, we can even set um, the length of each chord. Now we can duplicate this sequence using uh, copy and paste just so I can demonstrate briefly how these styles work. Now it's important to note you can tap on the uh, the header, the, the, the numeric value of the column and uh, switch column and then we're able to do something like uh, change the length of a particular playback of a chord. Uh, but I'm going to go back to the first chord in the chord palette uh, and I'm going to uh, try assigning a, a, um, a play mode change to uh, to that and the f to the first and the fifth element within this song chain. So 
We do that using this style button at the bottom here and when we hit the style button it applies the current play mode and a lot of other parameters uh, throughout the interface to that particular chord and I've just changed the play mode and assigned that to, uh, to uh, chord position 5. Now I hope you noticed that this time round the piano and strings came in at the same time. And the reason for that is that the style we set up uh, and, and assigned to, uh, to chord one of the song chain uh, included a, a channel, a MIDI out channel number. And basically we can change this MIDI channel number uh, at any point within the song. And uh, we can do this uh, by opening up the output channel window and you can see Base note was output to channel one and the rest of the apps was output to channel two but I've, I've set them back to one for the first uh, chord pad So if we go take a look at how the instruments are rooted here in AUM, uh, you'll notice that um, BS16, which is I'm using for the strings, uh, although it's uh, looking at port 1 and taking MIDI input from port 1, uh, the channel numbers, it's ignoring channel 1 uh, and only responding to channel 2. Whereas Pure Piano, again on port 1, but it's responding to both channels 1 and 2. So that's how we get that to happen. Now there's so much I can say about song mode, but uh, we need to move on. Uh, I'm going to have a dedicated uh, video for that. Now we also have a custom app editor and strum editor. And uh, we can generate up to uh, six memory resident uh, string patterns and arpeggiated patterns, which we can flip between in real time. Uh, those can also be triggered by uh, song mode, so you can flick between those various uh, variations by selecting one of the tabs A to F and uh, uh, you can uh, assign that as a style to an element of the song chain and uh, it is possible to create a whole backing arrangement for a song using this method. Of course all this MIDI output can be recorded into your favourite DAW sync to host or for the real adventurous ones we can use this in real time for real time performance okay now before we go there's one last uh, feature that i really should uh, uh, bring up and that is the humanize function which allows us to sound a little bit less robotic in our midi timing uh, so we can adjust uh, chord variation timing and individual note timing we can also have a kind of a random velocity uh, thing based on a chord and a note of a chord. Uh, we can uh, adjust the bass note uh, uh, velocity in relation to the app. And we can also uh, adjust the leading top note velocity uh, compared to the rest of the chord. Now finally, I want to say a big thank you to a personal friend of mine, David Collett who again has worked with me on this uh, second uh, MIDI uh, app. He also worked with me on Euclidean. And uh, he's created a fantastic uh, paper again, explaining uh, the theory behind all of this and uh, going back and giving you a little bit of history um, of, of, of kind of how the uh, uh, 24 basic scales evolved uh, going right back in time. So uh, this covers uh, everything that the manual doesn't, although it's quite comprehensive, the manual. If you want some real in-depth theory, you, you want to read this paper and it's available as a direct link, a direct download uh, within the help file. So all that remains is me to say thank you for watching this far. I know it's a pretty big video, but I wanted to cover all the basic aspects of this program. Now don't forget to subscribe and thumb up uh, and we'll have a, a lot of video tutorials coming on this app in the coming weeks. I would also like to say a big personal thanks to everyone that sent 
uh, best wishes and, uh, and leave, left comments on the various platforms uh, in support of Four Pockets and, uh, and me and myself with, with all my health problems lately. But I'm, 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 should be at the back end of all that and, and uh, I'll be ramping up uh, with lots more products coming in the foreseeable future. So you haven't got rid of me that quick. Uh, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.